Welcome back, beautiful and amazing people. Doc Jinzo here with another dual video for you today. We have a real doozy here, uh, recently recorded with the new Duels from the Deep Duels pack coming out today. We have Dinos with Big D on the left versus Aaron from Top Tier Gaming YGO playing the new Marincess on the right. Let's go ahead and get into it with the Soul Eating Over Raptor being normal summoned after. Lost World's being activated. Lost World's going to give Aaron a token on the summon of that Overraptor. And the Overraptor is also going to let him search for a miscellaneous source there. One of the more powerful dinos. It being put to one, uh, proof of its power, shall we say. It definitely helps dinos by making them unaffected by a lot and stuff like that. But that doesn't. But it doesn't really stop drawing Lotbird. It'll stop Ash, but not drawing Lotbird. So it looks like he's going to chain Mist to the drawing Lotbird just to play it safe here because miscellaneous source also can banish from the grave to special summon from the deck but that drone lock is definitely going to hurt his combo here a little bit looks like he's going to attempt to use over after's effect to destroy the token to bring back the misc but lost world's going to destroy a baby Sir source from the deck to stop that destruction which will allow baby Sir source to get its effect since it was technically destroyed summoning a giant rex from the deck again Dinos with that really good combo power, they're not a deck to be trifled with, and they've been out for a while now. They're definitely not a deck to be trifled with, especially in the hands of someone like D here, because D's been playing the deck pretty much exclusively. He does have some other decks, but this is his main deck, and he has, I want to say, mastered it, because he has definitely gone through the ringer with the deck a lot. He's tried various different builds. He definitely knows the deck inside and out. He's gone with the scrap build, he's gone with other builds, and he's gone with a slightly different build than what you'd expect here. So, but we'll save that for whenever it comes up in the dual video here, folks. Looks like he's going to overlay these two now. Dino's playing a good bit of XZs these days as well with the Evolzars. The Evolzars are very powerful. I am partial to Logia myself, but a lot of people say Dulk is better just because you get two negates off it and it's not once per turn. In certain situations it is, but I just feel like Logia is just better because it can negate more. So it looks like he's just going to sit on that Dulka and pass the turn. Very ballsy there putting it in that zone because you know you never know who's playing Anima these days because Marincess do have a level 1 uh, with Mandarin. Looks like Sign at Mining is going to be activated on Aaron's side, pitching off a Nib. Ash is going to say no to that. You'll see her in the corner very often with the Ash saying no there. So it looks like no searching off that Mining there. And looks like he's just going to have to pass turn after that. Looks like he drew a little too much hand traps there, or just maybe just not enough extenders. So it looks like the Dulka's going to attempt to swing into that token. Lost World's going to negate the destruction by banishing a Don... or destroying a Dino from the deck, my apologies. And then looks like he's going to destroy another Baby Sarasaurus to special summon another Dino from the deck. Summoning another Soul Eating Overraptor now. The Overraptor is now going to let him search on summon. And again, there's just that combo power with dinosaurs. And looks like we're just going to go to game two after that. Game two here, Aaron's going to start us off with a sign at mining. Let's see if this one gets ashed. Looks like it won't. So, looks like he'll be able to get a search because the Marincess are all cybers. They might be wa water, but they are cybers. Call them cybers there for a second. Grabbing a Marincess blue tang from the deck. Secret rare. Nice flex in there. You'll see Aaron... For the decks he cares about, he definitely has that, uh, <laughs> he definitely has that rarity shine to his decks as, uh, Pascalis is now summoned. That Pascalis is gonna summon a blue tang from the hand. Blue tang is gonna let him search for a, or you send a Marincess monster from the deck to the graveyard. And no, I totally just didn't read that off the screen. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Let's see what he decides to send here, folks. Looks like a Marincess Seahorse Starlight Rare. The, talking about flexing, uh, being sent to the graveyard here as the blue tang is now linked off to go into a Marincess blue slug. Looks like he's going to decide his chain links here, so the blue tang is going to let him do stuff as well. And then the blue slug is going to let him search on summon. Looks like he's going to add another blue tang off the blue tang's effect since it was linked off. So <laughs> that's a little bit unfortunate because you don't want to see two of the same card. And then Blue Slug is going to add that Seahorse right back to hand. Just the... And the new Marincess cards are just very good for the deck. The amount of extension you get is pretty crazy and stuff like that. Which we'll definitely see with this uh, in this duel. Good showing for the deck here as uh, Seahorse is now special summoned. 
off its own effect, linking it off now to go into the Marinza Sea Angel. Don't know why you want that Starlight off the board so soon there, Aaron. <laughs> but I'd, I'd keep that thing on the board as long as I could to make sure they knew that it was a Starlight and that it was really pretty. So the uh, Sea Angel is now going to be summoned off that uh, Seahorse, which will then add the Battle Ocean to his hand. Battle Ocean being a very integral card to the deck, a cornerstone of the deck, shall we say, making things equipped with the Crystal Heart Link unaffected, and basically just making the Marincess Link Monster a big old boy, as it is, it is very, very big because Battle Ocean boosts their attack for how many Marincess you'll see. As we now go into thinking about a Splash Mage there, opting to go into Coral Anemone here. Coral Anemone being one of the more expensive cards for its reprint. And then activating the Battle Ocean. So he's not going to use the effect of Battle Ocean just yet with the Coral Anemone because that's not really your boss monster there. So it's like Coral Anemone is going to special summon the new Marincess, one of the new Marincess cards, Spring Girl from the graveyard. But now he is locked into waters, I believe because of that, but that's not going to be a problem because it goes into a Pahamut Shark from the extra deck. Uh, detaching one material to special summon a rank 3 or lower water XZs. Going into a totally awesome here, just all the effects on the screen at once here. Totally awesome. Adding that little extra negate just in case D has that nib. As he goes into a Marincess Marbled Rock. Interesting that he not go into the new one, Coral Triangle, but Marble Rock Definitely also has some very good effects. It's not as bad as some people make it out to be. I know some people that just don't like the card, but I think the card's pretty decent. And as you'll see here, why just adds a little bit more extension here as it's going to add back that seahorse to hand here. And again, just refilling his hand with that Marincess is pretty crazy. Using the Spring Girls effect now to banish a Marincess monster from the graveyard to spec summon itself. Just, again, just that extension to go into links. It's like AIs, but just water. Linking off now into a Aqua Argonaut. Here's one of the newer cards, Aqua Argonaut. Very, very, very good card. So, interesting that he did not go Crystal Heart first because Battle Ocean will make the Aqua Argonaut unaffected by everything if it has Crystal Heart equipped. But he definitely has a plan here as Battle Ocean is now going to equip three from the graveyard to the Aqua Argonaut. And Aqua Argonaut lets him basically negate an activated effect of a spell or trap by special summoning one of those equipped Marincess, which is very, very good, because some of them do get effects on their Link Summon, but also just because it adds an extra body to the board on top of a Negate, and then he also has that totally awesome on the field. Drawing for turn now on D-side, let's see if he has any way to break this board. Activating a Lost World to start us off here, Lost World being a very, again, it's also, like Battle Ocean, it's a very, it's not really a cornerstone of Dinos, but it's very, very, it helps you get your combo pieces way, way faster. Looks like he's going to attempt Aqua Argonaut here to negate that Lost World, but on second reading of the Aqua Argonaut, he's going to decide not to here because it only activates, negates the activate effect, doesn't destroy the card, so looks like he might need to use Totally Awesome here, which he does indeed do. Then adding the Spring Girl back to hand off the effect of Totally Awesome. Special summoning a Pancratops here on D's side. Very, very good play here. Hitting that Battle Ocean by tributing it. Very interesting play. It Aqua Argonaut does lose its buff because of that now. And so it'll go back to just being a, I believe, 2300. It's interesting that he decided to hit the Battle Ocean instead of the Aqua Argonaut itself, though. Because the Aqua Argonaut does indeed, is indeed affected by most things. Activating Fossil Dig now. Gonna go get a level 6 or lower dinosaur monster from the deck to the hand. Adding a miscellaneous source, drone lock being activated again. The brutality of those hand traps there, folks. Activating miscellaneous source in the hand, pitching it to grave. And then banishing two, looks like he's gonna activate the effect of UCT in the hand to special summon itself. I don't really see a hard summon to UCT these days, they usually go for the pill, but... When you got to, you got to. And it is a very effective play there, as he does indeed attack the Aqua Argonaut for 3,500 over 23 for a total of 1,200 damage. And then adding the Battle Ocean back to hand off the various effects of his stuff that was sent to Grave. And let's see if D has any follow-up here. 
Looks like he doesn't have any follow-up there, so it looks like he's just going to pass the turn. Aaron's going to draw for turn now. His hand is refilled. He's ready to go. Let's see if he has anything to start us off. He did get that blue tang last turn. Activating Battle Ocean once again. Looks like he had another one. In, well, no, nah, it just got to back off. That's my bad. But Blue Tang is now going to be normal summoned using the effect to dump a Marincess monster because there's nothing like deck thinning in this game here, folks. Sending a Marincess Mandarin. Very good card. There's that level one that we were talking about. And then UCT is going to activate destroying the Water Enchantress in the hand to flip that Blue Tang right over. And the Blue Tang will be flipped over. Special summoning a Marincess Spring Girl now by banishing a Marincess Monster from the grave. Looks like he's going to banish that Marbled Rock. You can see Aaron here looking at his grave a couple times there. He's, uh, well, I might have cut it out the video, my apologies. But, looks, but as you can see, he's thinking three moves ahead, five moves ahead here, which is very integral, especially in matches like this, when you don't know what kind of follow-up your opponent has, even if they just have the one card on the board, because that Marincess, or that, uh, that Water Enchantress in the grave is definitely going to be a factor later on. So, looks like he's going to go into a blue slug here, and then get a blue tang back from the grave. Special summoning Marinsa Seahorse now. Getting that starlight just so pretty. Special on camera. Wish I did my high definition camera to get the full shininess of the card. Thinking about a Splash Mage there, but thinking better of it. Going into Splash Mage regardless here. Two Cypress Monsters. You'll see this card a lot in AIs, but it can also be played in Marincess because it is a water. So it looks like he's special summoning a Cypress back from the graveyard. Sorry, I have a diary of them out there. Maybe this whole video. Who knows? But it looks like he's going to link those two off and go into a Marincess Coral Anemone again. Coral Anemone is going to let him special summon from the graveyard. Let's see what he decides to get here. Looks like he's going to get that Pascalis. And perhaps get the effect of the Pascalis. Yes, indeed. That's going to special summon the Blue Tang in his hand. Blue Tang. Very shiny Blue Tang. Very secret rare Blue Tang. As he decides to link those two off to go into a Marincess Crystal Heart. Now this one is another cornerstone of the deck because that Battle Ocean says anything equipped with Crystal Heart is unaffected by your opponent's cards. Adding a Marincess Wave to his hand off the effect of Blue Tang being linked off there. And again, he's doing all of this after using his normal summon and the UCT basically just flipping it face down. Going into a Bubble Reef now one of the other Link 4s other than Aqua Argonaut, that's your, that's your basically your going second Link 4. Your going first Link 4 is Aqua Argonaut, your second, going second Link 4 is Bubble Reef. Because you want to get that nice attack boost. And also she lets you draw cards, which is very, very nice. So, looks like he's going to equip three, looks like he's going to equip the Blue Slug, the Coral Anemone, and the Crystal Heart, making her unaffected by basically everything. And then buffing her up to 4600 attack with Battle Ocean. Using her other effect to special summon the Marbled Rock from the Banish Zone by discarding a Marincess card. And yeah, looks like he has a pretty good setup board here, folks. Especially with that Marincess Wave in the hand. That's basically just an infinite permanence, but a little bit better. Grabbing a Marincess Seahorse back to his hand. Again, just the recursion is crazy. It's like AIs. Looks like he's going to go into battle here, swinging over the UCT with... Great Bubble Reef, and then swinging directly with mar Marbled Rock. Sorry, I had a hiccup there. And then looks like he's going to set one card. I wonder what card that could be. Could it be that Marincess Wave that he just got? And then Deeran D standby after he draws here. Looks like he drew a Regeki. He's going to banish a card and draw a card, which is a very, very nice effect. Bubble Reef, again, just refilling the hand. Marincess just keeps refilling the hand. He has a bubble reef that's unaffected by everything. D has to get rid of that battle ocean. So it looks like he's going to activate the water enchantress in the grave. Ash Blossom is going to say no. And then Faithful Adventure is going to be activated after the Ash says no. Basically just letting him search for a adventure token card. Let's see what he decides to get here. And it looks like he's just gonna, we're just gonna go to game three. All right, folks, here we are in game three. Aaron's starting us off. Very interesting that D's letting him go first here, but Dinos can do well in breaking boards, especially when you saw him have that Regeki there. But Regeki doesn't mean a lot whenever they have that Battle Ocean, so he's gotta be ready to get rid of that Battle Ocean. 
So Marine says blue tank is going to be normal summon. The dump is going to be good. So it looks like he's going to send a spring girl to the graveyard. Interesting choice. Let's see what happens here. As he goes into a blue slug. Blue slug is going to activate. Same with the Marinces blue tang. And it looks like spring girl also has an effect in the grave. So let's see what happens here. So blue tang is going to activate first. Getting him that mandarin to hand. You don't really want to see that in the hand. You want to see that more in the grave. But it can special itself on the hand. So it's not an overall bad thing. As spring girl is now added to the hand off the blue slug. And then Marinces seahorse is now special summoned to the blue slug zone that it points to. Looks like he's going to link off that seahorse there to go into maybe a sea angel to add a spell or trap. Yes, indeed. Looks like he's going to do just exactly that. Adding that battle ocean once again. That spring girl's coming in more handy than the uh, Aqua Argonaut. And we haven't really seen a Marin says dive yet, which is another one of the new spells, which is very nice. But we are seeing another spell in Sinet Mining, pitching off that Mandarin right to the graveyard, right where he wants it. To see if he can get a search off, which D does indeed allow him to have. He might not have any interruption for that. Going and getting a Marinces Piscalis. If this is making you hungry for sushi, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All these fish names. Going into a Mandarin now, summoning itself from the graveyard. And just that little extra extension to start link climbing. Battle Ocean is not going to be activated. Linking off the Blue Slug and the Sea Angel now. To go into possibly a Link 2. Yes, indeed, going into another Coral Anemone. Very good card. Allows him to specimen from the grave. So Coral Anemone is going to activate. And target the Blue Tang to special summon it. Going to link off now the Blue Tang and the Coral Anemone. Going into Link 3, one of the newer ones. Couldn't really find a better artwork for this, so my apologies. Going into a Coral Triangle. Coral Triangle is very, very good. So it lets him pitch a card from the hand on summon to add a Marincess trapped his hand. I wonder which one he's going to grab. Probably the best one in the deck right now, Marinces Wave. All the other new ones are okay, but Marinces Wave is still the best. Adding an ultra rare Marinces Wave as well, getting all this high rarity stuff. Now special summoning that Marinces Spring Girl that he added back to his hand by banishing Marinces Monster from the graveyard. See what he decides to banish. He decides to banish that blue slug. Now linking off the Mandarin and the Spring Girl. Mandarin's going to banish herself since she used her effect to go into a Crystal Heart. Looks like he learned from last game where he wants that Crystal Heart to be equipped so the thing is unaffected. Looks like he's going to mill two there off the effect of Spring Girl. Then he's going to link off the Coral Triangle and the Crystal Heart to go into an Aqua Argonaut. Kind of like how they made her look like a ram too. Just notice that. So it's like... It's like the Argonauts, like Jason and the Golden Fleece. Huh. Like that. And it looks like he's going to equip that Crystal Heart, a Coral Anemone, and a Sea Angel to the Aqua Argonaut. Keeping that Coral Triangle in the grave just in case he wants to get it back at some point. Because you never know if they might have something to banish it. So it looks like he's just going to set one and pass the turn. Looks like he set that Marincess Wave. So he basically has a Spell Trap Negate. A monster effect negate and an unaffected beat stick on the board. Let's see what happens here. Activating a lost world, that's going to be fine to activate. Baby Seraph Source is going to be normal summoned. The effect of lost world is going to attempt to trigger, but Aqua Argonaut is going to say no to the activated effect. Special summoning the Coral Anemone out to negate that activated effect. Again, just gives you a negate and a body on the board. It's kind of crazy. That Battle Ocean says all his Marincess gain 200 attack and. Gain 600 attack for each Marincess card equipped to it. So Fossil Dig is not going to be activated to search for a level 6 or lower Dinosaur. Adding a Megalo Smasher X. Very interesting. I did not know he put that in his deck, but let's see what happens here. Pitching off Miscellaneous Saurus now. To make his stuff unaffected. Or all his dinosaurs anyway, and for only this main phase. Banishing the Miscellaneous Saurus for its effect. To special in a level 1 from the deck, let's see what he intends to grab. He intends to grab an Animadorned Archosaur. Very nice. Animadorned Archosaur now destroying the Baby Sarasaurus to search for a double evolution pill. And then the Baby Sarasaurus is not going to special summon. Looks like he's going to summon that Soul Eating Overraptor. Then the Overraptor is going to activate and no response from Aaron there. 
Grabbing a Dogeron, the Mad Flame Kaiju. I think we know where this is going, folks. Dogeroning the Aqua Argonaut now. It's basically getting rid of it. Since it is not unaffected by being able to be tributed <laughs> for the effect of Dogeron. Well, it's not really an effect, it's just a summoning condition, which is why you contribute it with Dogeron. And using the effect of Aqua Argonaut now, it looks like. Never it's into Graveyard. Looks like D is now going to link off that Animadorn Archosaur into a Link Karibo. Just to get that extra body on the board for the double evolution pill, it looks like. Now it looks like he's going to attempt to use Water Enchantress, since he did not use a normal summon this monster's effect this turn. So he does indeed get that Rite of Aramisir. Rite of Aramisir is not going to be activated to put a token on the board and then search for Faithful Adventure. You guys know how the Brave Engine goes. Very good engine. Still. I played in a Blue Eyes deck, actually. It's kind of funny. Be activating a Faithful Adventure from the deck, and that's going to let him search if he wants, but looks like he's not going to search quite yet. Linking off that Link Karibo now into a Secure Gardener. As they are one to do in Dinosaurs, just for that non-dino target in with double evolution pill and looks like he's going to activate faithful adventure now on the summon of the secure gardener to add a draco back to his hand or equip a draco back to the token from the deck and then the draco back is going to bounce to the back row so he's going to bounce the marincess wave pretty much now, nothing will stand in this way aside from hand traps, so let's see if that happens. So adding a Faithful Adventure, or adding a Wandering Griffin Rider to his hand off Faithful Adventure. Let's see what he decides to pitch off of Faithful Adventure here. And he's going to pitch off the Megalo Smasher X. And then activating the effect of Wandering Griffin Rider to special summon itself from the hand whenever you control an adventure token. And then now activating double evolution pill for the little coup de gras here. Going to go grab a UCT from the deck by banishing the Adorned Archosaur and the Link Karibo from the graveyard as he has to banish one Dino and one non-Dino. Dino's a very good deck, but Animadorned Archosaur definitely put them <laughs> closer to the top, shall we say. And putting out an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, aka UCT. And attempting to use the effect of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno to destroy his token, but Lost World's going to stop that. Then Lost World's going to destroy a dino from the deck in order to stop it. And destroy another baby source to specimen giant rex from the deck. Now overlaying the giant rex and the soul eating overraptor in the hand just in case for Dugaris the Timeless. He is indeed not locked into dinos. But Dugaris is definitely going to help except for the fact that it just got a Fet Veilard. So he's going to swing the UCT over the Dogeron for 500 damage. And then over the Marincess for another 15 since... Or, not 15. Uh, the math will check out later, folks. We'll just wait till the battle phase is over. But yes, he's going to swing over the Coral Anemone since the UCT can attack every monster he controls. And then the Coral Anemone is going to add the Spring Girl back to hand. And then Gardna, Dugaris, Griffin Rider, and the token are all going to swing for damage, totaling to a total of 6,500 damage being done to Aaron this turn, due to the effect of Lost World not only making his stuff lose 500 attack, but also D's stuff lose 500 attack, if they are non-dinos. Drawn for turn on Aaron's side now, let's see if he has a way to break this board, as he does have a UCT on the board to flip stuff, and one, basically an Omni Negate. Special summoning a Marincess Sea Angel and a Marincess Coral Anemone from the graveyard. And special summoning Crystal Heart as well, linking those two off. Into a Marincess Great Bubble Reef. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I don't know what effect to let, the, let him special summon that many Marincess, so it's probably in one of the effects that I put up earlier, so. I'll be completely honest there. Spring Girl is now going to be activated, banishing one Marincess monster to special on itself. And then Great Bubble Reef is going to discard a blue tang to special back the Aqua Argonaut. And just rebuilding that board pretty easy. 
Looks like he's going to activate a Forbidden Droplet here to now discard two to attempt to negate the UCT being activated. Chaining Griffin Rider. And then Lost World is going to stop the destruction of the token by UCT. And destroying a Dino from the deck. Looks like he's going to destroy Petit Pteranodon. Special summon a Pancratops from the deck. Very good play there. And the Spring Girl is going to be flip face down. Aqua Argonaut is now going to bounce the Sea Angel. Or possibly not since he cannot target. Yes indeed, Aqua Argonaut bounces the Sea Angel and the Lost World. Seeing what else he can do here. So that's time in the round. Dinos take the match. 